Hello, and welcome to another episode of Be the Love to Awaken Our Souls. My name is Stacey Musial. And I am Brenda Carey with our special guest, Joshua Bloom. We are your co-hosts and souls on the journey. We are on a mission to raise the consciousness of humans and the planet, and we need your help. So please spread the word to your family and friends and join us every week. And if you have resonated with our mission, support us in a way that raises your vibration to love. And if it feels safe for you, I'd like to begin by inviting you to get centered with us. I'd like to begin by inviting you to take a beautiful cleansing breath in through your nose and out through your mouth, releasing anything that is keeping you from being present. And take another deep breath in through your nose, breathing in calm, peaceful, loving energy. And breathing out anything you are ready to release in this now moment. And take one more breath in through your nose, breathing in light and love for yourself. And imagine breathing that light and love and send it back to all of humanity remembering that you always, always have your breath to come back to. Our guest today is Joshua Bloom. Joshua transformed his life with an amazing process that has helped transform the lives of thousands of spiritually minded people, including empaths and sensitive souls for the past over 20 years. Now he's here to help you shift your energy and transform your life by using his powerful quantum secrets. Quantum energy transformation originated from life experiences from his own personal breakdown to breakthrough and is based on the acclaimed researcher's revolutionary study and discoveries in quantum biology. Dr. Bruce Lipton's science proves that quantum energy transformation works. He empowers his students and clients to completely release a multitude of ailments. Joshua is a trusted authority on the application of quantum transformation. He's the host of Emotionally Free TV and has been featured internationally on both radio shows, podcasts, and telesummits. Thank you so much for being with us today, Joshua. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here and discover with you both. Mm, Yes. Thank you. So let's start out by telling us about your journey and what has led you down the spiritual path. Well, I had a journey, I can tell you that. So many years ago, like 20 some odd years ago, I started feeling anxiety. And I don't mean like, oh, I felt a little anxious. Instead, I mean, I was really freaking anxious. I really couldn't function on certain days. Some days, just walking outside the house itself and maybe walking around the house was like a win. You know, it was real difficult because I felt very trapped in my life. I felt like it was so difficult just to just to go from one day to the next. I just had lots of difficulty with all of this. So I went out and I started to learn. I learned a million things. I learned um, over 20 different uh, healing modalities, most of which I became a practitioner of. And... Even with all of that I learned, (laughs) I wasn't able to help myself. So I went and I worked for a hypnosis center. And I had training in neurolinguistic programming and other things like that, but also in some understanding about quantum physics and how it relates to energy healing. And I thought I could utilize that in some way with all of the things that I learned. And I started to look at which things were important and which things weren't when it came to these healing modalities that I had all learned. And I found that certain things didn't matter whether you did it or not. And other things made a bigger difference than others. And I started to work on clients because when I worked at the hypnosis center, uh, they realized that I had some talent and that I could work with with, with, um, clients. So I started to work with clients and it was, it was fun. The very first client I had, she had anxiety. (laughs) Interesting, right? (laughs) She had anxiety. And what was really funny about it was that the woman who owned the center had double booked herself for like the second time (laughs) 
with, with this person. She says, I can't cancel on this person. Can you take the other lady? And I'm like, yeah. So now imagine this lady isn't thrilled. <laughs> right? I, I, I just, she got, she got Joshua. She doesn't know Joshua. She knows nothing about Joshua. And now she gets who she considers to be, you know, like not the owner of the center. <laughs> and so I go ahead and I bring her into this office and I work with her on her anxiety. At the end of the session, I thought I did a really good job. At the end of the session, she says, I want to talk to the owner. And I'm like, what did I do? <laughs> you know, I got really scared. And so what ended up happening, it was funny. Um, she went out to the owner. She was done with her session. And she said, you got to keep this guy. He's amazing. Hmm. I don't feel anxious anymore. I feel great. And she reported back later that the anxiety was like a resolved deal. Unfortunately for me, every day I had my anxiety. I didn't resolve it for myself and it was really, really frustrating. It's like I know things. Obviously, I was able to help someone do that, but I wasn't able to help myself. The next person I helped had fibromyalgia and in four minutes, she said it left her body. Mm. In that experience, I thought, who's the crazy one? Because I wasn't sure. I really wasn't. I, I'm like, she just told me that fibromyalgia was an incurable syndrome. I didn't even know what it was when she said she had it because <laughs> I was a newbie at the time. And so that was, that was like a miracle that had happened. And I realized I've got something here. So out of these experiences, I created quantum energy transformation because it was working. <laughs> sort of like, you know, throw the spaghetti on the wall and wow, it is working. Great. So I started to use quantum energy transformation with everyone and everything and was getting results beyond what people would expect. Mm -hmm. And I was getting shocked and excited and like, whoa, what do I have here? This is awesome. And eventually I worked on Joshua <laughs> and my anxiety went down, 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 down. So, so well, which is really good. And I, I became a sane person again. <laughs> you know, that was good. Mm -hmm. Then after that, Many years passed, and I moved from Manhattan because I was living in Manhattan for the like you know like the second or third time, and then I moved to New Jersey because my mom she needed some extra help, and I figured I'd move closer to her to help her because you know she's getting up there in age, and it would be good for her to have someone right nearby to help her. So I, as a good son, did that. I moved near her, and in that experience of doing that. I started to have the same kinds of things, but worse that I had like 20 something years ago. And I said, I already went through this. I already went through all of this. What is happening? It was very frustrating and really difficult for me. And in my frustration and difficulty and working with myself, because at this point I was better at working with myself and still not really getting there, I was introduced to my spirit guides they were always with me, but then I was actually able to connect with them and speak with them. From that experience of working with them, they told me that I should make a pendant. And so I did. I made a pendant. And why I needed the pendant was because I was having a lot of issues with entities. And that was the issue that was making me you know, stay in my house and not go anywhere. Because if I went somewhere, I'd pick something up and bring it home. And mm -hmm. then I would, I would then have the difficulty with them. Of course, you know, people have to come into your house either to fix something or your you know, friend comes over. So they would bring something in. It was really getting rough for me in my experience. So I made this pendant. And when I did, that stopped entities from attaching to me. Mm -hmm. Changed everything. And then I realized that's what was happening to me 20 some odd years ago. So no wonder not anything was working because I wasn't getting to the root of it, which wasn't, wasn't me. <laughs> it was mm. something outside of me. You know, I must be really, really, you know, I must taste really good or something because entities just seem to love me. So I resolved my issue starting with the pendants. And that was a game changer for me. And after that, I created other quantum tools. And in doing so, I fully resolved my entity issue mm. and 
took things to a level of 5D that I never, ever expected mm. I experience in my life. Um, never mind, have my clients experience the same kinds of things. So things in my life are quite different now than they were before. I'm a totally different person. And I have gone through the ringer, but I've come out at the other end. Mm. And who I am today, wow. I've moved into the person that I'm capable of becoming. Mm. Wow. That's a beautiful, beautiful story. So thank you for sharing that. Um, there's so many pieces and, you know, little um, places we could go with that because there's so many nuggets there. Um, I want to back up a little bit and and talk about just the quantum field. And, you know, it sounds like you were having a lot of success with your clients initially. And, and so I'm wondering if you could talk a little bit more about the quantum field and the quantum energy and what you were doing to help support your clients at that time. And sounds like maybe currently. Absolutely. <laughs> so I started working in the quantum field all the way back 20 something years ago before quantum was anything. Anybody, anybody really, no one really knew about quantum or anything. I really oh, started working on it out of necessity for myself. And Quantum is the understanding of moving energy at the cellular level of the body. Inside the cells, there are little packets of energy and information. And that information, we move the information, and it either transforms when we move it, or it releases out of the body. When it does either one of those two things, and really it doesn't matter which one, it changes the frequency of the energy as well as the experience of the energy because it transforms into a higher level energy. And now how you experience that issue or problem is totally different. Now, I don't want to state this in a way that you need a problem to use quantum energy transformation because you don't, because you can always up-level yourself more and more and more and more and more, even <laughs> if you don't have a problem you want to work on because we can always become more, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. And and I think, um, yeah, we're always on that path, right? Whether or not we're moving energy and, um, you know, for wanting just to raise our vibration. And, and so, you know, we all like, as um, humans, right, and especially I love your book, right, the ultimate answers inside, and it's teaching empaths and intuitives to harness their own innate quantum powers. Um, and so I think that's such a powerful um, you know, experience to be able to, a powerful gift to be able to give that to someone, especially as an empath, when there can be such overwhelming emotions and attaching, you know, um, things, you know, outside entities or other people's emotions. And, and so what would you say to, to an empath, if you could, um, you know, to help them really shift to the inside and you know start working with that quantum energy what is what is a um, technique or maybe a process that you would um, tell them I like that you use the word process and I'll tell you why because we don't do techniques so techniques are working at a very low level of change a technique is something that might take 27 days to do or 30 days or something like that to get done I work with a different type of change, and it's called evolutionary change. Evolutionary change happens in the moment, while incremental change, which is what strategies are, incremental change, one step at a time, that happens in time. You do the same thing over and over and over and over again, sometimes until your, all, your eyeballs fall out, and then, well, maybe you have a change and maybe you don't, right? So. When we think about quantum, we think about change happening evolutionary, like you move the energy and then you just become. So mm -hmm. we work at the identity, spirituality, and um, purpose levels, as well as the level of possibility. When you work at those levels, which are really high in comparison to the low level of strategy, then we understand that we can work at these amazing levels that allow you to become a person who no longer requires the problem, which is really powerful when you think about that. Wow, how do we become a person that no longer requires the problem? Well, it starts out with getting out of our head. 
our head is wonderful and our mind loves to tell us things. And if you ask your mind a question, it will give you an answer. May not be the best answer, but you'll get one. <laughs> and our mind is, in a sense, like the leader. Like the, the mind and the ego are like together and they're like the leader. They're leading us wherever the mind and ego want to go. Think about it like this. This is a really great analogy. I don't know if you ever heard of Caesar the dog whisperer. Mm -mm. Well, it's really funny. He went to Oprah Winfrey's house. <laughs> he did. And Oprah had, I think that Oprah's dog was named Sadie, but don't, don't quote me on that. Anyway, her dog wouldn't listen to Oprah. So everybody else listens to Oprah, but not her dog. <laughs> so Oprah Winfrey brought in Caesar. So, you know, before Caesar came, um, she was trying to get Sadie to sit. Forget it. Sadie wouldn't sit. Sadie wouldn't do anything. Nothing. Sadie was a pain in the you know what. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Sadie would only do what Sadie wanted to do. There was nothing else. So Caesar comes in and this is priceless. Oprah opens the door. Caesar walks in and Sadie is next to Oprah and she sits. He didn't say sit. That mm. was powerful. Mm. He didn't tell the dog to sit at all. Mm. Sadie just sat. Mm. Why? Because she knew who was in charge when he walked in. Mm. It was an energy thing, right? So now think about it this way. Your mind is Oprah's dog. <laughs> okay? mm. And your body is Caesar. So when you look at it from that perspective, we don't want our mind to be in charge. We don't want the dog to be in charge in the same way. We don't want the dog to be concerned and worried about things and be up front <laughs> like that, right? Trying to make sure everything is good. We want the dog to be taking a back seat and be happy, playful, and fun. We want our mind to do the same thing. If your mind thinks you're not in charge, then your mind takes over. If your mind knows you're in charge, just like when Caesar came into Oprah's house and, and Sadie sat, your mind will take a back seat and your body will lead. When your body leads, there's a very different way of living. It's a very Absolutely. different way of life. Mm -hmm. It's a way of being, not a way of doing. Mm -hmm. And this is a very big distinction because a lot of us, we all work on the level of doing strategies, as you mentioned before, right? Mm -hmm. So we're all working on this level of doing, but we really have to get to this level of being. How we begin the process is literally to get out of your head or be out of your mind, which is a good thing in this case. Mm -hmm. <laughs> being out of your mind or being out of your head means that your awareness needs to be somewhere else, not in your head. And we learned that the base of the spine is not only a great place to do that, but it's the portal to the quantum field. So it's the tailbone. So when you put your awareness down at the base of your spine, one of the biggest things it does is ground you. Think about this. Those people that are in their head all the time, and you know who you are, because <laughs> I was... <laughs> I was definitely one of them, okay? <laughs> in my head, in my head, that was me. Okay, so when you put your attention in your head, or those people that are, have their attention in their head all the time, they're really not in their head. They're really out of body. Mm -hmm. And that means they're, um, they're not connected to their higher self. People with illnesses like fibromyalgia, for example, or migraine headaches, or other types of um, physical pain issues, they're not in their body either because they're out of body to get away from the pain. It just makes sense, right? Mm -hmm. However, you don't need to be in pain to be out of, <laughs> to be in your head because most of us have been trained to be in our head from ever, ever since we were born. You know, my father used to say, you really need to look before you act. You need to pay attention. You need all these things, you know what I mean? So, so I was getting praised for being in my head. Mm -hmm. So of course I became a very heady person. Then I learned how to ground myself by putting my awareness at the base of my spine. It was an interesting experience because the first time I noticed it, my throat relaxed. Mm -hmm. I said, wow, imagine the pressure I was putting on my throat simply by, 
keeping my attention up here rather than down at the base of my spine. So the power of what I'm saying is that when we move our awareness or our attention down to the base of our spine, we start to enter into a way of being. And then we become in our body. So being in your body is different than being in your head. When you're in your head, you're out of body. When you're in your body, you're literally in your body. What I mean by that is this. Your higher self, when your frequency is not good, when you have a low frequency, then with a low frequency, your, your higher self does not want to be in your body. It leaves. And it doesn't tell you it's leaving. And you might not even know because it's a habit. So <laughs> your higher self is probably living above your head. It's still around you, but you're not fully connected with it. So when you're not connected with your higher self, then you are what we call disconnected. Well, what happens when you're disconnected? Oh, we get anxiety and depression and all the other things that are issues with disconnection. We get illnesses and problems and all sorts of things. And we think, oh, that's something else. But really, it's just because you're disconnected. I work with a man who his wife said, my, my husband's going into a depression. He was in a depression before, and he's going to go into it again. And I was just visiting their house because I was friends with them. And, I, and she said, can you help him? I said, sure. I taught him one thing. I taught him how to open his auric field. Now, when you open your auric field, it does many things. One is your aura opens, and it opens like this. So down and open. What's, what's important about that is it grounds you. So opening up your aura helps ground. Mm -hmm. So when you open up your aura and it grounds you, it, it gave him that space. You know, we need space. His aura was like, you know, <laughs> I'm not giving myself any space, right? So we opened the aura up really big. And he didn't go into depression. We stopped mm. it. Mm. And he just opened his aura and he kept making sure that it was open, not as a strategy, but as a way of being. Mm -hmm. And he still doesn't have depression. Mm. So I love that. It's amazing what one little thing can do to really change your life. Yeah. And so being in your head is not great because you're really not in your head, you're out of body. And your higher self will come into your body when you bring it in. But you also need to be at a high enough frequency because what's going to happen? If you're not at the right frequency, up and out. And mm -hmm. that's the issue. So I teach my clients to not only be in their body, but to raise their frequency to really outrageous high frequency. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> we go up to like 10,000 hertz energy frequency and we go really, really, really high. It's really awesome. Mm -hmm. And when we're there, we're in that 5D energy, really mm -hmm. experiencing what it's like to be fully connected to yourself, fully connected in your body and in that beingness. Mm. It's, I remember being with a client um, just, just a couple of weeks ago and she said to me, um, can, we, can we just do that high frequency thing? Can we get into our body and do that? I said, sure, no problem. You know, usually we do that in like five, 10 minutes in the beginning of a session anyway. So I took her through that process and it was just amazing. And then we were just really just basking in the goodness of this feeling. And, you know, I opened my eyes because I thought we would do something else. And so I said, okay. And she said, oh, Joshua, can we just keep doing this? I'm like, yeah, we can. <laughs> And so we stayed in our body. Well, we weren't going to leave our body anyway, but we stayed in the body really deep. And we connected in this 5D energy. Mm. And just doing that shifted so many things for her. Mm. Her life changed in that like 40 minutes of just being in the body. You don't necessarily have to do anything. This is why strategies aren't as important mm -hmm. as beingness, right? Mm -hmm. right. Beingness is key. I think that's so important for, like you mentioned in, in your book and in, in your bio about how you work with empaths and intuitives and highly sensitive souls. And I think, I really think it speaks, and many of our listeners, including myself and the clients that I work with, they fall into that category. 
And I hear so many times, and I'm sure you probably have too, they're like, I tried all the things. I, I tried the, whether it was the Western medicine side or an alternative medicine side. And then they start getting into this lower vibrational thought of maybe something's wrong with me or why, you know, this worked for that person. Like there must be something that's not right with me. And then I do think that impasse, and this is a superpower. I, at least I tell myself that, that we can absorb other people's emotions, thinking that they're ours. And that also triggers the, like, what's wrong with me when it's really not even ours? I think one of the most important, whether you call it an energetic process, um, for me, it was the awareness that I'm like, oh, that emotion's not even mine. And like huge light bulbs went off for that one. And I think many people like with those symptoms of anxiety, you know, pain related issues from emotions like fibromyalgia, it can be a a process of consuming in or a, that, that they're not even realizing that they're taking in other people's and not even people living now. It could be generational. It could be a collective and taking it all in. And I love how you use a process rather than you mentioned a technique. So I'm curious about what would be a process or how do you identify, first of all, someone who you may realize, oh, their anxiety is coming from taking in other people's emotions or whether it's the collective or ancestral, like how, do you, how are you aware that that's happening to that person? And then what kind of process would you give to a person who is going through that type of stress? Great question. So what's great about quantum energy transformation is you don't have to know what mm. or where it comes from, which is really great because there's a whole lot of modalities out there trying to figure all that out. <laughs> <You know? laughs> and there's some great yes. modalities. You can go and figure out every little aspect of what's happening and why. And it so you in your head. <laughs> <laughs> I know that personally. <laughs> exactly. So so what's great about not needing to know about where it's located or where it's where it's where it came from is because you can go right to the root of the issue. And where is the root stored? It's stored in the energy that that person is feeling in that moment when they consider it or when mm -hmm. it or when they're triggered by it. Mm -hmm. And so what we do is we just simply move the energy. And when we move the energy, it moves. Now, I also get information about things from my spirit guides. I call them the travelers. And they tell me things about what's happening for people as I'm working with them. Oh, you should do this exercise or, oh, you should help them with this or you should, or, or this is what's happened. I remember a long time ago, um, I didn't know my spirit guides were telling me things. <laughs> I, didn't, I, was, I didn't have that awareness yet. And um, I had said to a woman, I said, how are you doing? Because she was coming, she was coming, to, she was a client and she was coming in and she says, I'm not really doing well. And I said, oh, it must have been when that thing happened at age seven. And she looked at me and she started to cry. She says, how did you know? I'm like, at the time I didn't know, I know now, but, but I didn't know how I knew. But that was amazing to realize that I was able to get information from Mm -hmm. My spirit guides letting me know what was happening for other people. Now, sometimes that information can be very useful because now if I know that that's what it is, I could just trigger them purposefully and, and you know, with lots of heart and love. And, <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and have them bring up that energy in a very safe powerful way where they don't re-experience mm -hmm. it, by the way. This is not about going into a big thing. This is... I'm, I'm not about drama. Let's just say that. No drama. <laughs> let's look back. Okay. So we, we get them into a place where they're not going to feel it in the same way. We're going to get them into a really powerful, strong place. Then we bring that information up and then we can just release it. Now, what I do is I teach my students how to connect with the travelers so that they can have the exact same experience as I do when working with someone and they say, oh, look here, do this, go there, mm. this is the way to go. <laughs> mm. That's beautiful. So it's really, yeah, connecting with 
their their energy and and releasing that and but but the 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 truth of that is is that we all have responsibility of we are have our own personal responsibility and and it's within us so it's not going outside of us for these like quote tools or whatever so that's and that's a, why i teach my, my students yes. to do it for themselves too so it's not yes. just about joshua knows it's mm -hmm. about oh well, i know too I can, yeah. I can be a no person as well <laughs> yeah yeah and and i think that's such a beautiful because it empowers us it brings us back to our own sovereignty because we're all sovereign beings right and so so i just love that and you know i'm wondering um you know going back to this um the energy of being in the 5d and and so i know i i i go into that place a lot and I, I can feel that energy i i've been told my energy is very big and expansive and and then there's you know those times where things feel contracted and you know when things come up and you're you know go into maybe old patterns or old you know fatigue or things are happening around you and trying to stay in that high vibration and and so for the for the empath um you know or maybe yeah somebody who's maybe experiences that energy i'm wondering is there a process that you have that helps you to stay in that that 5d energy and what do you suggest around that yeah well it's so powerful to get into the 5d energy and it's also important that we don't experience what's called ascension signs have you heard of those Mm -hmm. yep. yeah, I'm not into that either. <laughs> so we don't do ascension signs in quantum energy transformation. We also don't do healing crises or anything like that. And the reason that we don't is because of the way that we do it and the tools that we use. So the pendants, for example, mm. allow me to go up in frequency really high. I remember um, it wasn't so long ago, actually, that I decided before, well, it was years ago, but before I, <laughs> before I got the pendants, I wanted to be at 1000 energy frequency, which I thought was very high. And I wanted to be at that frequency because it was meaningful for me to be there. So I set a sort of like an, like an, like a, um, I had a really amazing process that allows you to set that frequency to whatever you want. It was like a manifestation process. That was the word I was looking for. And I was going to manifest and maintain permanently this frequency of 1000 energy frequency. Mm -hmm. And so I did the process and I got to the 1000 energy frequency and I set it to be there permanently. Oh my God, that was a mistake. Mm -hmm. When I did it, unfortunately, all of the lower frequencies that didn't match that frequency started to leave at the same time. Mm -hmm. And so you can imagine that was going to throw me into what you might call like a nervous breakdown kind of thing. Because <laughs> if everything is coming up, everything is leaving at the same time, that wasn't a really great thing. So I realized it was happening and I caught it on time and I immediately went back and reset to a much lower frequency to maintain and all of that stopped so good and then i realized uh oh that's not a good idea because we get a healing crisis when you don't do it I, i'm gonna say properly it's not the best word but it's in in a way that doesn't produce the healing crisis mm. so i guess it wasn't a great way because there was you know very very uncomfortable to say the least so it sounds like so your body is actually trying to catch up with the energy frequency as you're exactly. letting go. And what a healing crisis is, mm -hmm. is when you don't move the energy enough to make a complete shift. And this is what happens with incremental changes we talked about earlier. When you don't make a complete shift, the body has to catch up. And it mm -hmm. does, but it causes a healing crisis. Mm -hmm. So what we do in quantum is we move the energy at first and we get it to be at, to a point where you're not going to have that healing crisis and you don't or ascension sign or anything like that so then when i got the pendants i was able to actually raise my frequency upwards of 10,000 energy frequency plus hmm. in that 5d energy and i was able to do it without a healing crisis and then my clients were able to do it too which is pretty cool hmm. so i can take you, you mentioned oh. 
I just want to say you've mentioned the the pendants um, a, a few times now, and I just want to inform our listeners. Can you give us a little bit of a, a backstory on the pendants? And because sure. um, they are they are beautiful. Uh, yeah, thank you I've been. For that. Yes, I've been wearing mine for 24 hours and I've felt this amazing shift of energy. So yeah. I we love to, yeah, if you could share uh, about the energy around them and, and how they were created, that'd be beautiful. Absolutely. So um, originally I went and I bought a pendant uh, from a street fair. <laughs> and when I was at the street fair, I had, I had asked the, the woman there if she could tell me how to you know, help me with entities because it was really rough. And she said um, that you need selenite and black tourmaline. And I, I was about to say, well, do you have them together? You know, because if I need both of those, maybe I need to wear them together. And I didn't ask that question though. So instead she answered the question that I asked in my mind. <laughs> and she said, of course I have them together. And I said, wow, this lady's on the same wavelength as me. This is good. Mm -hmm. And so when she she handed me a pendant and I wore it and it stopped the entities from coming. Mm. So then my spirit guides informed me, but Joshua, that's not it. And I said, what do you mean? That's not it. No, you're, you're, you're not at the level yet of where you need to be. You need more um, crystals to be added to this pendant for it to really do what you want it to do. I said, well, what do I want it to do? You know? And they said, you want it to automatically release the triggers that come up for you. And I said, yeah, I do. <laughs> because, you know, although I'm really, really great at helping other people release their stuff, right? I notoriously have been my worst client. Okay, I think that happens to most of us. Right? <laughs> I'm really great with everybody else. You know, I don't have time for me. I'll just help you. You know, that kind of thing. <laughs> That's my life. But when it came to me, it was just so difficult to do the things that I was able to help other people do. So as being my most difficult client, um, I realized that having that kind of, a, of an ability for the pendants to help me release it, because I wasn't good at doing it in the first place, that would be good. And the first time I felt that, that was amazing. I just, I just realized I had gotten triggered and unfortunately, some of my triggers have lasted somewhere around eight hours. So that's, you know, you, you just, you can't work, you can't do anything. You just have to move the trigger and, or just feel uncomfortable. <laughs> and so because they were so difficult, you know, you get into a habit of, oh my, I've just been triggered. Is this going to be an eight hour thing or, you know, a one hour thing, a three hour thing? I got things to do. And in two minutes it released and I didn't do anything. And I'm mm. like, that's good. That's cool. Mm. That's new. Mm. And so it actually moved the energy for me. See, first of all, the, the pendant puts you into your body. It puts you into the quantum field simply by wearing it. That's awesome. So here's the problem that my students have had for many years while I was engaging with them with quantum energy transformation. They would say, Joshua, I can't seem to stay in my body. And I'm saying to them, yeah, I get that. I have ways to do it that are effective. But when we put the pendant on, it was instant. Mm -hmm. I put the pendant on and I'm just in my body. I don't have to try to be in my body. I don't have to think I'm in my body and not really be in my body. <laughs> mm -hmm. None of that. I, I am it. just in my body because of the pendants and they have changed my life for that reason. Mm. But then my clients now have a tool that they wear so that they can also just be in their body. Mm, yes. And I was amazed at that. I'm like, okay, great. So they put you in your body. They raise your frequency. They raise your trust level about 75%. So most people have a trust level that's low down at only 25%. Mm -hmm. So that means we're mostly distrusting. Mm -hmm. What that means is most people are going to be on the edge of anxiety just already without, you know, one little thing happens and oh, anxiety. Mm -hmm. So now it raises it 75%. Mm -hmm. see, that's like a hundred. Mm -hmm. So if it raises it that much, 
imagine how high our trust levels can get. So mm. my trust level is really, really super duper high now because I mm. had a pretty high trust level to be, I had a middle range trust level, maybe mm. higher than middle range, higher than middle range. But I was probably about, well, it depended on the day, right? So when I was really in a really great place, my trust level would be already at 75%. Mm. Um, sometimes it would be at 50%. And when something happens, it'd be like 25% or lower. Mm. And that was not good. So the pendants raise your trust level. And, and because of that, you're not on the edge of fight or flight or anxiety mm. anymore. So that's yes. a big thing. That's huge. That is huge, especially, yeah, we, you know, there's so much trauma in our, our worlds right now. And so we're, you know, I'm a psychotherapist. And so I help, you know, people with trauma. And it's just a, you know, it's a very prevalent. Um, I'm wondering, though, if you would um, love to lead us through a little process of maybe moving into the fifth dimension, if that'd be something that you could could share so with us. Gonna, yeah, so I'll do it like a two or three minute process that will take us into our body first, because remember, we've got to be grounded first. We don't go into the high frequencies mm -hmm. unless we are grounded. Mm -hmm. Okay, This is very, very important. I'm all about being safe first, and then we can, you know, play and enjoy ourselves and really create amazing things. <laughs> but, but first, safety first. I don't. Yes. There, there are lots of people that have not followed that rule, and and they've gotten themselves in trouble. I have not, and mm. either of my clients, and I'm not interested in that either. No, thank <laughs> <So>. you. <laughs> no, thank, thank you. you. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. So safety first. So everything that I do with you will 100% be safe and. The other thing that it will be will be easy. Mm. When I was in a de debilitating anxiety, you know, you want me to do something difficult. I'm al I already had it by this point. You know, anything difficult, I'm, it's like well beyond anything I can do. Um, you know what I mean? When you're in that place, and a lot of people are in that place because they've 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 been through the ringer too. Mm. So especially our empaths and our intuitives and light workers, they have worked so hard to try to get out, but they keep getting stuck in it. And I get it because I've been there myself. So I'm going to take you through an experience that will bring you into your body and ground you. And then we're going to raise that frequency up mm. to a really high frequency. And then we're going to be in that place. It's best if you stand, but you can do it sitting. And when you when you do it, um, I'll do it from the perspective of standing because I'm, I'm actually standing right now. And um, if, if you happen to be sitting, just adjust to what you're doing. Unless I tell you to walk somewhere and you don't want to walk. Like, <laughs> OK. All right. <laughs> OK, here we go. So what we're going to do first is if um, you're standing, you're going to put your attention under your feet. If you're sitting, put your attention at the base of your spine. And if you're sitting, you can feel the chair that you're sitting on touching your body, right? Touching your butt. So you're going to keep your attention basically on your butt where the chair is touching your butt. That's it. And that's what you're going to do. If you're standing, you're going to feel your feet touching the floor and you're going to feel your feet and the floor connect. That's it. And you're just going to keep your awareness low in the body the entire time. And then we're just going to breathe in through the nose and out through the mouth. And make a wind sound when you breathe in through the nose and then blow. Yeah, when you make the wind sound, it just helps. Breathing in and out. Breathing in and out. And just allow yourself to take a ball of energy in your hand. Yeah, just in your hand. And just feel the energy in your hand. Maybe you'd like it to be a color. I like to use gold light. But you could use any color you want. So put whatever color that you would like into that energy. And as you hold it there, you start to notice it builds an energy, right? So take that energy and you're going to put it just above the top of your head. And we're going to bring it into the crown chakra. Let it go into the crown chakra going behind your eyes. Passing your throat. Let it go down as it moves on its own, passing your heart, your upper stomach and your lower stomach. Breathing is good, letting it go down to the base of your spine and leaving it there, just at the base of your spine. 
and taking a deep breath in through the nose, out through the mouth. Good. Now what you're going to do is you're going to remember that there's a you up there, a higher self you. We're going to pull your higher self you in just the same way we did the ball. So bring the higher self in, in through the crown. Pull your higher self's legs. That's it. Just into the crown chakra. <laughs> going down into your body. And let your higher self slide right down, going behind your eyes. Breathing is good. Passing your throat, your heart, your upper stomach, your lower stomach, and let your higher self slide all the way down into your legs and down into your feet all the way. Wow. Now, for some of you, that might feel really cool because you're going to notice you weren't in your body, but now you are. So just keep your higher self there. Your higher self is very happy right now. And just breathe in through the nose and out through the mouth, anchoring down your higher self, which should be filling up every nook and cranny inside your body and feel how good that feels. Now open your aura. Just push your aura out. Push your aura out to the sides. Open all the way as big as the room. Remember to do it in the front and the back too. Just front and the back. Fill up the room with you. Just feel like you're everywhere in this room. Not only are you where you're standing, but you're in every possible position. This is called superposition. You're in every possible position that you could be in in the room at the same time. And just feel what that feels like. <sighs> Good. Now, I'm going to teach you something called a candle breath. A candle breath is like imagining that you have beautiful birthday cake right in front of you with candles in it. And you're going to blow the birthday cake candles out. And we're going to do that with several breaths. You know, like a child does it, right? The child <laughs> blows out the candles and doesn't really do it right. But we're going to do that. We're going to just keep blowing until the candles go out. We're going to do 10 of them. And you can use your arms up and down or not. Either way is good. Just we're going to breathe in and quick out. Good. We're going to do that 10 times. Here we go. Good. You should feel some vibration happening now. You should feel like there's some vibrating going on and some, some energy moving. Remember to keep your attention now, either under your feet at the base of the spine, either one is good, and just be in your body this moment. Put one hand on your heart and the other hand on your power center right above your belly button. But take your pinky and put your pinky right to your belly button. And now we're just going to breathe in through the nose and out through the mouth. And right through the nose and out through the mouth two more times in through the nose out through the mouth one more in through the nose out through the mouth now let's lift the frequency keeping your awareness low in the body we're going to go up in frequency so keep that anchor grounded yet we're going to go higher and higher and higher in frequency and i'm helping you I'm, I'm, I'm using my pendants and i'm using my energy to help you go up so here we go go higher and 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 even higher than that and higher than that just sort of that's up really go high into that 5d energy here we go higher and 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 higher, there we go, we're hitting it. And higher, and higher, and higher, and higher, and higher. Woo! And feel what it feels like here. <laughs> Remember to keep your attention either under your feet or at the base of your spine and breathe. In through your nose, out through your mouth. One more time, in through the nose, out through the mouth. Remove your hands. And now if you're standing, you'll notice that you're much taller than you were before. You'll feel it. You're like standing on a stage. If you're sitting, you might notice that you're sitting like 
you know, they tell you how to meditate where they want you to sit up and it's like, oh, that's hard to do, but you're probably doing that automatically <laughs> without having yeah. to try, right? <laughs> it's like, oh, I just, just, uh, I don't know. <laughs> Energy just moved, right? So now we're at this really amazing 5D place. It is priceless to be here. It feels so good. And now the things that may have been a problem before may seem a little bit smaller than they were before. Hmm. Thank you so that much. That was Joshua. beautiful. Yeah. Thank you. How did that I, feel? Oh, it feels amazing. It felt amazing. It feels amazing. I feel so elated. And, you know, I came in with really high energy and I just feel like I just shifted in, like another, um, yeah, I don't know, <laughs> another <laughs> octave or <laughs> five, 10, 15 octaves. I don't know. <laughs> Thank you so much, Joshua. I, I just so appreciate your work, your energy. It's just, it's re truly lovely to, to mm. be around people doing positive work in, in the world. And I would love, as we wrap up this amazing conversation, tell our listeners where they can find you and anything you're currently working on. So you can find me at beingquantum.com. That's B-E-I-N-G. Q-U-A-N-T-U-M dot com. And there you'll be able to find the pendants and all about me. Also, I have a free gift for you and your audience. This is an amazing experience. You're going to want to go through this because it's going to change your life. It is a powerful, powerful way to bring in the light. You know, energy and light are the same thing. When we bring in the light into our body, it strengthens us. It gives us that extra oomph. It brings love and healing to our cells with cellular healing, and that's powerful. So this gift that I'm giving you is called Bringing in the Light. You can get it at www.iqet.com forward slash love. Mm. That's iqet.com forward slash love. <laughs> when you go there, you will be able to uh, experience this, what I call a guided connection. It's not a meditation, but it might sound like one, but it's really a guided connection. It guides you and connects you to yourself as you bring in the light. Mm, I love it. I love it so much. And we will add all of those links to the show notes. So, oh, thank you, Joshua, so much for being here today with us and sharing this beautiful experience and this conscious conversation. It's been absolutely amazing. So thank you. And thank you for listening to Be The Love Podcast. If you've enjoyed listening to our show, please share the love by sharing it with your family and friends, giving us a five-star written review on iTunes and Spotify, or liking us on Facebook. And please consider supporting our mission to awaken our souls with a monthly donation that helps us with the operating costs of this podcast so we can continue to spread the love. To contribute, visit our Patreon website at patreon.com forward slash Be The Love Podcast. And stay tuned for more episodes being released on Mondays at 5.55 a.m. Mountain Time.